In 1801, the United States was 25 years old. There were 16 states in the Union at the time, and most Americans lived within 50 miles of the Atlantic Ocean. Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of Independence, had just become the country's third president. Jefferson believed that the powers of the federal government should be limited and that it should be primarily concerned with foreign affairs. So Jefferson reduced the size of the federal government, but he also increased the size of the country itself. Soon after Jefferson came to office, Spain gave a huge part of its land west of the Mississippi River to France. Many American farmers shipped their crops down the Mississippi to the port of New Orleans. Jefferson feared that France might take away American access to this vital port city. So, in 1803, Jefferson sent diplomats to France to try to buy New Orleans. At the time, the French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte was preparing for a war with England. He was eager to raise money for that fight by selling France's land in North America. When Napoleon offered to sell the entire Louisiana Territory for only $15 million, Jefferson's agents quickly agreed. The Louisiana Purchase of 1803 doubled the size of the United States. President Jefferson ordered an expedition to explore the lands west of the Mississippi River. Its purpose was to learn about the region's geography and natural resources and about the Native Americans, plants, and animals that live there. Two men led this expedition into the vast wilderness. Jefferson's private secretary, Captain Meriwether Lewis, and former army officer and cartographer, William Clark. In the spring of 1804, Lewis and Clark left St. Louis and headed up the Missouri River with three boats, two tons of equipment, and 33 men. Most were white Americans, but French Canadians and an enslaved African American man were also part of the expedition. Some days the party traveled as far as 25 miles. Other days they journeyed fewer than five. The explorers encountered many different Native American groups along their way, and often traded goods they brought with them, such as fabric, metal tools, and beads, for food and advice about the local geography. In October 1804, Lewis and Clark arrived at the territory of the Mandan people in what is today North Dakota. They had traveled 1,500 miles in 161 days, and the weather was starting to turn cold. Lewis and Clark decided to camp there for the winter. They picked a site below the Indian villages to build a log fort. The men spent 150 days at Fort Mandan waiting out a harsh winter. Three new members joined the expedition that winter. A French-Canadian trapper named Charbonneau and his Native American wife, Sacagawea, were recruited as translators. The couple's newborn baby was the third person. The expedition set out again in the spring. More than two months after leaving Fort Mandan, the explorers confronted what was perhaps the greatest physical challenge of the expedition. In June 1805, they reached the Great Falls of the Missouri River. Continuing upriver by boat was impossible, but they did not want to abandon their boats in case they would need them further on. In order to keep the boats, they would have to haul them and their tons of gear 18 miles overland. They spent 12 days at a camp below the first falls preparing for this task. They made carts for the boats. They also tanned hides for clothing and moccasins. While that work went on, Lewis sent out hunters to stock up on food for the long challenge ahead. It took a month from mid-June to mid-July of 1805 for the men to transport their boats and equipment around the falls. Lewis wrote of the ordeal. At every halt, these poor fellows tumble down and are so much fatigued that many of them are asleep in an instant. Some are limping and others faint and unable to stand for a few minutes. Once the party finally passed the Great Falls, the expedition continued up the Missouri by boat. On foot and by boat, the party reached the Rocky Mountains in August. By mid-October, the group had crossed the mountains with horses loaned by some friendly Native Americans. They then made their way down the Columbia River toward the Pacific Ocean, 
By this point, the men were hungry, tired, and filthy. Their clothes were threadbare, and many of them suffered from diseases. On November 15th, the expedition finally saw the Pacific Ocean. Clark wrote, Great joy in camp. We are in view of the ocean, this great Pacific Ocean, which we have been so long anxious to see. But that joy quickly faded as winter came. They built a shelter they called Fort Clatsop to spend the winter. Their winter stay on the coast was wet and difficult. It rained nearly every day. Clark spent time working on his maps while the men waited for winter to end. Christmas, 1805, was especially difficult. Clark wrote, We would have spent this day of the Nativity of Christ in feasting, had we anything either to raise our spirits or even gratify our appetites. Their Christmas dinner consisted of a few roots, spoiled fish, and spoiled elk meat. After more than three miserable months on the coast, Lewis and Clark began their trip home in March, 1806. This difficult journey involved traveling against the strong current of the Columbia River and then climbing over the Rockies again. In July, 1806, while crossing the Rockies, Lewis and Clark split their party into two groups so they could explore as much territory as possible. Lewis took a small group down the Marias River while Clark led most of the men down the Yellowstone. They reunited a month later where the Yellowstone met the Missouri River. On September 23, 1806, the explorers finally reached St. Louis, where they were greeted as heroes. The journey of Lewis and Clark was an epic adventure that required them to travel more than 8,000 miles over 28 months. It was also an important event in American history. Their notes and drawings of the lands, animals, and people they met were a storehouse of information about the new lands. The map published in the first edition of their journals was a milestone in North American map making that detailed much of previously unmapped lands. The journey of Lewis and Clark brought Americans valuable knowledge and opened a new chapter in the nation's history. What was the purpose of Lewis and Clark's expedition? What role did Sacagawea play in Lewis and Clark's expedition? <laughs>